These modern engines, they're just, they're built differently. They're built for efficiency and power, but potentially not the same durability as we once saw. Welcome back, I'm Alex, and we're with this fourth gen Toyota Tacoma that Toyota so kindly lent us for the week. Last time we were talking about this 2.4 liter iForce Max engine, going over all the internal workings of the engine, some things that I really like about this engine, and I'll link that video down below so you guys can check it out if you want, because it is a very interesting setup. Today, however, we're going over some concerns, or let's say questions I would have about this 2.4 liter iForce Max if I was a buyer looking to buy this engine. And we know that no engine is perfect. Each engine has its pros as well as its cons. And this 2.4 liter engine is going to be no different. I really wanted to be blown away by this 2.4 liter engine. It does look pretty solid, but to me, it felt like Toyota was very focused on making this engine fuel efficient, to reduce emissions as well as making a lightweight package. And typically that doesn't necessarily reflect reliability, durability, or longevity, which these trucks have been long projected with. It is too early to know whether or not these engines are going to be reliable or not, but it is something that certainly got me thinking. Getting right into it, the first thing that would potentially concern me is that this engine does not use a normal thermostat like the previous 3.5 liter V6 engine did. Instead, we have a water or a coolant control valve. And what a coolant control valve does is it allows the ECU to help manage the coolant flow, when to flow coolant, where to flow coolant, to just optimize the engine's temperature controls much better, allowing the engine to run more efficiently. It's gonna reduce wear as well as increase fuel economy, reduce emissions. You guys get the point, but it is made of reinforced plastic. And unfortunately, it does seem like this engine is having some issues with this coolant control valve already. There are multiple coolant ports, valves, gears, and even an electric motor inside this, this plastic housing. And to me, it seems like it's a high risk or a potential high risk failure point on this engine. A cooling system is subject to a lot of heat cycling. And as a mechanic, I question whether or not plastic in this environment is going to hold up for years at a time. Unfortunately, we've seen a lot of plastic cooling system components fail over the last couple of years. Three liter Duramax, for example, uses a plastic coolant control valve. It's a very well-known issue on that engine. The new three liter Hurricane uses a plastic thermostat housing. Again, a very well-known issue on those engines. The 2019 to 2021 Subaru 2.5 liter boxer engine, which was in the Forester, the Outback, the Crosstrek, it was very well known for coolant control valves failing, which were plastic. In fact, in 2023, there was actually a class action lawsuit filed against Subaru. The 2.5 liter Skyactiv engine in the Mazda CX-5 from 2017 to 2023, had very well known plastic coolant control valve problems. Even a favorite of mine, the 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine has had issues with its plastic thermostat housing, which has warped over time and caused leaks. So I don't necessarily blame Toyota for going with a plastic coolant control valve. It just seems like that's what the industry is moving towards. But to me, it is still a rather high risk failure point, if that makes sense. The next thing that caught my eye is that we have a cast aluminum block with an open deck design. And this T24A engine is largely based off the A25A engine, but that engine is not turbocharged. Obviously we have a turbocharged. This engine is a forced induction engine and to have an open deck aluminum block to me, does not really signify strength or durability. The three liter Hurricane engine in the Ram 1500s, for example, another tight wound up modern force induction engine uses a fully closed deck aluminum block. The 2.7 liter EcoBoost as well uses a partially closed block, but its block is made from compacted graphite iron, which provides superior strength over aluminum. The benefits of using an open deck design is that you have better cooling because coolant is all around the cylinder walls. It makes for a lighter weight design as well as more efficiency. And perhaps Toyota needed to cool this high strung engine. That's why they went that way. However, with an open deck block, 
we don't have as much cylinder reinforcing at the top of the cylinder and that's exactly where your peak cylinder pressure is going to be especially for a forced induction engine that's why i would have loved to have seen a closed deck or even a partially closed deck design so where we have our peak cylinder pressure we have some more reinforcement in there to play devil's advocate the 3.5 liter EcoBoost in the F-150s, which has been around since 2011, many, many years, it has always been an open deck aluminum design. And that thing pushes out a ton of power. It tows like a freight train and it seems to be just fine. So just food for thought, I would have liked to have a closed deck engine block design. It is what it is. Another thing that I wanna talk about is the power output out of this iForce Max. It is the segment leading 326 horsepower. 465 pound-feet of torque but it's interesting because Toyota has just added the power of the engine and the power of the electric motor together and gotta stop myself there for horsepower that's absolutely correct you add these two numbers up you get 326 horsepower for torque however you add these two numbers up you actually get 501 pound-feet and that's that's not what we have here so it's partially correct what I said yes on paper that makes some sense but I question in the real world whether or not that actually reflects the real power output out of this engine throughout most of the RPM range. I mean, you know, you put your foot down. She moves right up to our speed limit. When I first got in this truck, I felt like the three liter EcoBoost in the Ford Ranger Raptor was quite a bit quicker. And that is true the zero to 60 or zero to 100 kilometers an hour in this truck is over seven seconds and the weight of both of those trucks is about the same same 33 inch off-road or all-terrain tires on them so it begs the question why is this truck so much slower once we get over 3000 rpm it feels like there's a little bit of a drop off on this engine it is just yes right there right there you can feel there's just a little bit of a drop off. I don't know what it is. Now, what's also interesting is apparently the non-hybrid engines in these trucks are actually quicker accelerating trucks, which doesn't make much sense either. We'll go through a couple gears. acceleration are not everything especially when it comes to a pickup truck but with this iForce Max engine having a vast increased amount of power over the stock non-hybrid 2.4 liter engine you would like to see some quicker acceleration some quicker speed and dare I say it's a little disappointing that we don't see that now who knows maybe when we put a load on this engine we're not towing with this truck this time around but maybe when we have a trailer behind it that's where we really see this engine shine with that extra torque and horsepower behind it. Either way, I feel like the power figures for this Ice Force Max are a little bit suspect. Let me know what you think. Next are the very thin low tension oil control rings that this engine uses. What the hell is an oil control ring? Well, I'll show you. This right here is a piston out of a big Detroit diesel 15 liter engine. And um, as you guys can see, we have a couple of piston rings here so we have our two upper compression rings or fire rings as some people like to say and this is your oil control ring the one on the bottom and what this ring does is if you would focus is it helps to scrape oil off the cylinder walls so we're not burning excess oil in the combustion chamber and you can see we have a rather thick high tension oil ring here and that's going to really help prevent the engine from burning oil and a number of other things. Toyota, and they are not alone, has used a very thin, low tension oil ring. Again, why you might ask? Friction, baby, because the less friction you can have in an internal combustion engine, the more efficient it's gonna be, and critically, the more you can reduce emissions. A common theme with this engine. The downside is we could see more potential of this engine burning oil because with those low tension thin oil rings, it could leave more oil on the cylinder walls, which could be burned up in the combustion chamber, especially when under load and when under high cylinder pressures, which this is a forced induction engine, we will see high cylinder pressures. We're also prone to potentially more blow-by and critically with this engine being a direct injection engine, 
we are potentially prone to fuel actually slipping by the piston rings and getting into the oil and diluting the oil. Again, I have to preface that Toyota is not alone. In fact, pretty much every engine in the segment, midsize as well as the 1500 trucks, use a very similar strategy, trying to lower the internal friction of the engine with low tension rings. And you pretty much have to go to a heavy duty gas engine or diesel engine to find a normal functioning oil ring that were once used on these engines. You don't really have to go back that far. Mid 2000s engines in these trucks, as well as other light duty trucks in the segment used normal rings. Here's all our Tacoma engines from the beginning 1995. And you can see we have a conventional higher tension ring style all the way until 2015. And the older engines are known for their durability, oil use very rare, robust, oil consumption wasn't a widespread issue, rarely burned, oil unless neglected, known for longevity. And then we come to our brand new engine here, modern turbo downsize engine, uses ultra thin rings for efficiency, heavily relies on PCV intercooler and catch can systems to minimize oil consumption. So this is just the way of the modern engine. These modern engines, they're just, they're built differently. They're built for efficiency and power, but potentially, not the same durability as we once saw. Next is the balance shaft in this engine. We have a heavy undersquared inline four engine, meaning that we're gonna need some pretty serious balancing because unlike an inline six that is perfectly balanced out of the box, this engine is not. And Toyota uses polymer gears driven right off the crankshaft to drive their balance shaft to reduce weight and to further reduce noise and vibration. Again, just like our plastic coolant control valve, are these polymer gears gonna hold up after years of service, years of heat cycling? And from my understanding, the variable displacement oil pump is run right off the balancing shaft, which uses these polymer gears. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the design. I'm just questioning whether or not it's gonna hold up. And ultimately it seems a little bit light duty. The next thing we gotta talk about is the complexity of this engine because we have a lot going on here under the hood. Now it's not like the previous generation 3.5 liter V6 was some simple pushrod V6 because it was not. It was a dual overhead cam engine, variable valve timing, so it had its own complexities. Secondly, Toyota is once again not alone. Across the industry, the engines are very complex. The 2.7 liter EcoBoost, which I quite like, it's a twin turbocharged engine. There is a lot going on under this hood. So it's not just Toyota with a ton of complexity stuffed under the hood, but it is something to consider. The more complex things are, typically the more failure points you're gonna have. Take this fuel system, for example. Over 4,000 PSI of pressure, we need a high pressure fuel pump, we need sensors, we need a high pressure common rail, high pressure fuel injectors. It's turbocharged, meaning we have a water and oil cooled turbocharger. All things that could fail and could be less reliable. So just something to consider. Overall, I think most people are gonna have a good time with this engine. The design does seem solid, but again, it's just, it's too early to, to really know where this engine stands in the real world, in the hands of real people. I think there's pros and cons to every engine. The benefit or the pro to this engine is you're making a ton of power out of a very fuel efficient package as well as a lightweight package. The cons or maybe the potential downside is Toyota's strong focus on fuel economy as well as reducing emissions. To me, that often signifies that strength, durability, reliability is not at the forefront of the design of the engine and that could potentially reduce the life of these engines. Again, I'm just some run of the mill diesel mechanic. So what do I know? That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think because I like hearing from real world owners. Hopefully you guys like this little mini series with this Toyota Tacoma Trail Hunter and covering the 2.4 liter iForce Max. I love doing this stuff. Um, like I said, let me know what you guys think about this Tacoma. It's very interesting to me. There's a lot of cool stuff about it. And there's obviously some stuff that I don't like what we touched on today. If you did like the video, 
don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe because I believe I'm getting another Toyota truck later in the summer, potentially a TRD Pro Tundra. We'll see, we'll see, but you don't wanna miss that. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you on the next freaking video.